coming out of this third great awakening. To happen on the third day, you would could say, out of resurrection life, come stepping into eternal life, into oneness with him. And so I'll step back a little bit here as far as in regards to this super blue blood moon. Uh, a super revelation coming forth from the Holy Spirit. For the cleansing of our conscience, bringing us into that revelation of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the sign that we just had on September 23rd, 2017, the woman who is birthing this man-child. And of course, the woman is clothed with the sun, the light of the sun. The moon is under her feet. What is that speaking of? Once again, it's the revelation of the Holy Spirit that has brought us to the place that our feet are set upon the rock of Christ Jesus, the, that this is who I am, Christ, one with Christ. And this is those, as it says, they birthing the man-child who is caught up to the throne. Well, who's caught up to the throne? It's those who overcome by the, overcome this mortal mind, who overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and by word, by the word of their testimony, the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy, they overcome to sit with the Lord in oneness upon the throne. And so this, I believe, is what this super blue blood moon is in regards to tying into that um, in close proximity to that is this coming into the fullness of this and that it's fully released here in 2018 um, and then I'll just quickly tie in Psalm 118 um, in regards to his connection with 2018. As David says there, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his mercy. See, this is speaking of the sure mercies of David. The Father's hand upon David, he laid his hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. This is speaking of him stepping into his identity in Christ, and coming to know this love of Christ which passes knowledge, the height, the depth, the breadth, the length, in Psalm 139. So where was I? Um, Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endures forever. Let them that fear the Lord say that his mercy endures forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. In Christ, coming into this Christ consciousness. He set me in a large place. The Lord is at my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Those enemies. Those enemies of our minds. And in, of course, so this is being brought into this large place. In Psalm 118, David is stepping through the gates of righteousness as he speaks about. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them. What is that gate of righteousness? It is Christ. Christ said, enter ye in through the narrow gate. What is that narrow gate? It is Christ. It's our identity in Christ. For narrow is the gate and afflicted is the way that leadeth unto life, life eternal, the knowing becoming one. Narrow is the gate, and afflicted is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. 
but wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, and many there be that go in there thereat. So Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the progression through the tabernacle to come into the Holy of Holies, into eternal life, and into the oneness with him, that they may be one even as we are one. That is, in passing through the gates of righteousness and beginning to enter into that journey in our identity in him. So David said, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and praise the Lord. See this praise, this people have I formed for myself, they shall forth my praise. It's a praise coming forth up out of our identity and having stepped into that identity and this praise coming forth as we're overcoming the enemies of our mind that have come against the spirit of Antichrist that has come against our identity and who we really are. And this is the, the Psalm 22, 25, the, my praise shall be of thee in the great congregation, coming out of my identity in you. And as Christ said in Psalm 22, 22, which of course is tied to the key of David, Isaiah 22, 22, it says of Christ that I will declare your name unto my brethren. What is that name? I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I will declare your name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. As the Christ identity comes forth up out of us. It's the praises of Christ as we become one with him in our identity. As we... <laughs> As David said, he, he brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. That rock, that the Holy Spirit, the revelation that he was brought into of his identity in Christ, standing upon the rock, where now his head, as it says in Psalm 27, is lifted above his enemies round about him. And he's come above those enemies and overcoming the spirit of this world and so to be honest I did not give a lot of thought to this I just wanted to release it as quick as it was coming and uh, I pray that the Lord enlightens you and uh, it's going to be a glorious year I believe and uh we're going to step into things that we've been desiring to step into for a long time and seeing the reality um, that so many of us have been desiring to walk in, that we would walk just as Christ walked. As it says in 1 John, that in, in chapter 2, he who says he abides in him ought himself so to walk even as he walked. What does that mean? It's when we come into our identity, step into him, truly abiding there, coming into that consciousness, we will walk even as he walked. And there is the gospel. There is the good news. And so, Holy Spirit, I thank you for the signs in the heavens, for revealing your plan that in the end here is speaking to us. It shall surely speak and shall not lie, and that the knowledge of your glory shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. As Isaiah 11 also speaks in regards to this, that there came forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The, se the seven spirits of the Lord resting upon us. Coming into a Christ consciousness, the full anointing of the Holy Spirit and that we will not judge after the sight of our eyes neither reprove after the hearing of our ears but in righteousness shall we judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and we shall smite the oppressor with the rod of our mouth and with the breath of our lips shall we slay the lawless one, the wicked one the spirit of Antichrist which is coming against our identity and then what do we see? The restoration of all things. 
which is our identity. <clears throat> and in that section in Isaiah chapter 11, we see his glory covering the earth. Let me just turn there real quick, Isaiah chapter 11, and we'll close with this. They shall not hurt, hurt nor destroy, in verse 9 of, of chapter 11, Isaiah. They shall, and this is regards to the yoke of Christ, the seven spirits coming upon us we become yoked into his consciousness. This is where our rest is. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. This is the knowledge of his glory as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest and his rest shall be glorious. There remains a rest to the people of God. Let's be diligent to enter into it.